Hello all, and welcome back to the Smoky Scale. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Minecraft's brand new yet untitled update, 1.20.5, which is the precursor to the next major update which is still yet to be untitled, 1.21. While this update is no major, it still includes some new additions worth talking about. Without further ado, let's get into the review. The first feature I'm going to talk about is the Armadillo mob, a mob which was voted in during the Minecraft Live 2023 mob vote, which had players pick between the Armadillo, Penguin, or Crab. Unlike with previous updates, Mojang reportedly had a secondary smaller team work on the mob and its features, which kind of shows in terms of how much it adds. Lots of animation work went into the mob feel very lively, which is a trajectory that Mojang has for most new mobs added, so they can market them easier probably. These mobs drop a new item called Armadillo Scoot, which can be crafted into wolf armor. Wolf armor can be equipped onto a tamed wolf, and will provide it with more protection than it'd have without it. Unlike horse armor though, wolf armor will tank all damage dealt to the wolf until it fully breaks dealing no actual damage to the wolf, and just like leather armor, wolf armor can also be dyed to give your wolf some of its own identity. While the armadillo and its addition still don't really make me justify its addition in my head, and it definitely makes me think that its new skewed item could have just been leather or a different item already in the game, wolf armor is a pretty good addition that we wouldn't have gotten without the addition of armadillos. Likewise, another feature that wouldn't have gotten added at least in this update is the addition of wolf variants. In this update, 8 new wolf textures were added, giving even more uniqueness to this mob. And before you say anything, yes, the old wolf texture is still in the game, however it will be a little harder to get one with the classic white look as they only spawn in spruce forest aka the taiga plant. Wolf variants are something I've wanted in this game for a long while and I'm glad we finally have them. While I would like to see more added in the future, such as nether variants and maybe an end variant, it's nice to see some love towards a pet mob that seems to be left to the wayside in favor of cats. As for gameplay additions, this is pretty much it for 1.20.5. Yes, this is a minor update, but it's also noteworthy of talking about. My overall opinion of the features here is a 70%. It's no secret that each update comes with its own list of changes, and this one has some to talk about. Firstly, players are now required to use a 64-bit operating system to play. While well, most new PCs run on a 64-bit system now, if you're still stuck using a potato to play the game that happens to be 32-bit, you will no longer be able to play. I don't really understand this change, as especially right now, there seems to be no gears changing to suggest any graphic update of some sort coming within the near future. This can change quick of course, but this just seems like something that didn't really need to be done. Secondly, UI changes. UI changes are a big change whatever the game may be, and oh boy, I do not like these ones. At least they're decent enough to allow you to revert some of the so-called improvements, however a lot of these just make the game look really ugly on the main menu. Most of the UI changes are related to making all the menus transparent with blur, so you can always see the gameplay or main menu panorama in some way. But this is probably one of the changes I especially don't see why they did it the most. Alongside these UI changes, whenever you transport over to a different dimension such as the nether or end, the portal background for the respective dimension will now be what you see during its loading screen. While this would be a relatively nice addition to have, what they have in game looks really jank and doesn't work for me. Besides all of these changes, there are the ones locked behind the 1.21 experimental data pack, which I won't mention any of until my 1.21 review this summer. My overall view on these changes and ones not mentioned is a 40%. Could very well use some work which I'd expect to see by the release of the upcoming major update. 
Now on to the verdict. one20.5 is a minor update, which I wouldn't normally review, but due to the amount of additions and changes it brings for a minor update, I sought it as worth to it. But due to the amount of additions and changes it brings for a minor update, I sought it as worth it to review. My overall stance on this update is that it's okay. There are some good changes here and there, but some of them leave me with more questions than none. Overall, I'm giving 120.5 of 50% on the smoking scale. Mojang better count your days. Anyways, that's about it. See ya.